This is video 61 on an ePaper display interface to Home Assistant using ESP32 microcontroller. ESP Home supports a variety of WaveShare ePaper de devices. In this video, we configure it to display Home Assistant data in two methods. Please let us know in the comments if you like this example or let us know if you have suggestions to improve it. For this effort, one affordable e-paper device is the WaveShare 2.9 inch black and white display. To ensure we have enough memory, we chose to use the ESP32 S3 N16R8 USB device with 8 megabytes of PS RAM. As this channel covers multiple small system solutions over time, please subscribe to stay informed and click like as that really helps. Our goal for this effort is to compare two methods of displaying Home Assistant data on ePaper. We shall demonstrate the ePaper display with positional, layout, and a dashboard snapshot. Briefly discuss the WaveShare ePaper display and wiring. We'll discuss the Home Assistant add-on called Puppet, and we'll review our ESP Home YAML. The YAML configuration files are at the GitHub site that is mentioned in the description and endnotes for this video. Let's look at the demonstration. Home Assistant is running with an ESP Home device. Let's show the first demonstration. We are looking at the WaveShare 2.9 inch ePaper display showing Home Assistant data in a positional layout. We will wait long enough so you can see the refresh. For our second demonstration, we configured this Home Assistant dashboard. Then we configured our ESP Home device to take a snapshot and send it to the ePaper display. Here is the ePaper displaying the image from the snapshot. The nice thing about this method is that we can change the dashboard and the new image is displayed on our ePaper. Let's watch the refresh. Looking at our online retailer, here is the ePaper device we selected. It has a modest resolution of 296 by 128 and is only black and white. Let's look at the hardware configuration. After choosing the SPI2 pins for, for DIN and clock, we freely chose the other pins. The connected power leads to 3.3 volts and ground of the ESP32 S3 device. After reading messages from the community forum, we found a proper display setting for the 2.9 inch display which is a reset duration of 2 milliseconds, an update interval initially at 60 seconds, and later you can set it to any value, like 5 minutes, an hour. But also, the most important one is to do a full update every time, which is, uses the value of 1. To configure the ESP Home YAML, we studied the online ESP Home section on ePaper. It gives us an example configuration of the hardware and a lambda for a positional display of ESP Home sensors. You simply add another printf statement. Fortunately, these printfs mimic C code printfs, so the syntax should be familiar to many programmers. Now, let's shift to the dashboard method. We begin by installing the add-on called Puppet. Please be aware that his webpage states that this is an experimental feature. To do this, you need to first add the link via the three dots in the upper right hand of the online store webpage 
to set it up in a, as a repository item. After installing the Puppet add-on, you need to configure it. You'll need an access token, which you can get from the security tab of your user profile. Paste the whole token into the first field. Then enter the Wi-Fi IP address of your home assistant into the second field. This is used by your ESP home device to find the dashboard. Finally, for the third field, I just left the default value of 10,000 for the port address. You can set it as you desire. Now you can add online image components, which defines the dashboard snapshot size. Notice we defined that the e ink uses two colors and is inverted. Then we change the display component to simply have a single sensor, which is the online image. We shall see the details for this all in a minute. Let's do a quick review of the YAML. First, let's look at the configuration for a positional layout. As you can see, we have a standard ESP home setup at the beginning for an ESP32 S3 device. We do have the time sensor and the sensors for the current temperature and forecast temperature and a condition configured. Just as an example, you could have used anything. Then we have a definition for the font. Here we're using the Google font Roboto. Finally, we have the definition for the display. We have both displays uh, defined here, so we're gonna look at the positional first. We have the SPI bus defined, and then we have the positional display. Notice that we have the various pins and in this case, we're using version two of the 2.9 inch display definition. And here's the important part, the reset, update interval, and full update every time. And then we have a positional uh, print F statements. Here we have the temperature, condition, and the forecast. Now let's look at the online image configuration for the dashboard snapshot. We're looking at the ESP Note YAML again, and notice that the beginning is still configured for an ESP32 S3 device in the same, same manner. We no longer need the sensors because we're gonna get the data from the Home Assistant system. Now we've, we've got the HTTP request and the online image defined. And notice it's configured for a specific dashboard in the Home Assistant. We have the SPI bus. And finally, we have the definition for the display, which is very similar to before, but all we need is the single Lambda statement for the image. And that's it. In summary, we demonstrated two methods to update the ePaper display. We presented the ePaper display in our test rig wiring. We discussed the setup of the Puppet add-on. Finally, we walked through the YAML statements of the ESP home device. Hopefully this introduction helps you with your ePaper display design. Please comment if you have a different experience with these devices. I hope this video helps your home assistant coding. Thank you for listening.